Hello again. It's Lifecraft time. Now, last time we did a little a bit in here in the Rook, and I've done a little little work off camera. You may remember I built this uh, this stairway uh, coming up from here. I still haven't decided what to do with these yet. But I've also added this now. Now this goes down, around the corner, and down, little view over here. And then we go down this unfinished bit, and we end up in the bottom of the ravine underneath here. Now, one of the things I said I would do is, after I have a little snack, is I would do a, um, a tribute uh, monument to the UHCs we've done. Uh, there's been three of them two of which I took part in, one of which I missed, and I thought I'd put put them somewhere in here. Not entirely sure where yet, but uh, I thought I'd do little tableaus of uh, what had happened. So the first thing I remember from the first UHC was uh, JT managing to get himself killed by a skeleton by hanging around outside as he got dark. So, if I want to do that as a tableau, um, then we need a skeleton head, which is, according to our head pack, only available with uh, by blowing up a skeleton with a charged creeper. Now, I'll now, although uh, it is slightly easier these days to find a charged creeper than it used to be in the past, you still need to get a channeling trident. Now the tridents that are available here, 70 diamonds, neither of which have channeling, and I think couldn't put it on loyalty, or can you? No, it's riptide, it doesn't work with. I'll buy one of these, which just have mending on them, Hammers and paling. They're also 50 diamonds, so that's kind of expensive. But first things first, what we really need to do before then is get ourselves some willy victims.
And to that end, uh, over back here at the Big Dig, I've built a platform. And above this platform, we shall put a mob spawner of some sort, and then a catcher, and then a sorter. So we will sort out, uh, if I do this right, four different types of mobs. Skellies, zombies, creepies, and witchies. So, no, that's lava. Uh, yeah, um, this, this is a glass floor for the very simple reason that I built that floor below it and then remembered that we have a slime farm here, so yeah, try that that way. But anyway, uh, I'll come back when I've got a little more something set up here. Uh, I have checked this out in a, in a creative world, but uh, there are still questions about where things will go and how tall it will be. So, back in a bit. It's been a few days since my last recording, uh, which you hopefully have seen, uh, and although I have not been recording, I have actually been playing and digging stuff out back at the base, but uh, for the moment I'm going to take a little break and we're going to try out uh, what I think is BD's Elytra course. Now uh, there are as yet no instructions, but I think I've worked out how it works, and uh, so basically this is the score chest. A number of red red blocks will appear in there, depending on how long it took you. This is the chest to return. Um, 
the score that you do have. When you hit this plate, the timer will start, and when you hit this button, it will open that and also stop the timer. Uh, another important point, if I look in the right direction, yeah, he's up there at the moment, uh, my camera count is, is sitting there to keep everything loaded, otherwise you get a very much shorter score than you would want. So we're going to try for a, a quick run. Hopefully everything will work this time. And we're going to go straight for this. Then you do a right. And... Whoa. Whoa. Oh God. Down here. Oops, that's a little painful. That is more than a little painful. That's curtailed our run. But anyway, so uh, once you get past that one, if we did, then the route goes up here, along here, down here, down here, up this way. Oh, I'm going to kill myself if I'm not careful. I think the rest of it, that's rather a small one. So I'm going to snack, kind of. And uh, yeah, then the last bit of the run is through here. In here, under there, this is the last ring coming up, and then you would swing in and press the button, and then the score here would be 40. Now I have done a 30 in testing, that obviously didn't involve hitting any of the rings. So now I'm going to see what my best score will be. There we go. 29. That's my best yet. And three, two and a half hearts left. Wow. Okay. Let's see. I think Karis has done this as well. But we'll have to see who else has. Anyway, time to head back. And see how things are. Back here at the uh, the big dig, as you can see, we've got this about mm, just about halfway down. Uh, this is about the time when it starts spawning slime, so that's the fun bit. Has been a bit of a um, a mob farm at time. And now I'll introduce you to a new friend if I can remember where I put him. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think. There he is. Ah, that's an interesting thing because the best thing about him is his um, hat swapping ability. There he is. Now, uh, yeah. down one more maybe, and then. All right, this chap. Uh, rocked up to me when I was um, doing stuff out. And as you can see, he's de he decided to pick up a bow. Uh, obviously, not wanting to be the usual, um, what you would call it, zombie type. Oh, he's not doing it at the moment. Earlier, when I gave him the hat, he preferred it, and he, but then he kept changing back. Uh, I may have a little 
snapshot of him doing that, which is kind of sad he's not doing it anymore. Anyway, so yeah, so he, he's now living here. Um, hopefully Karis will avoid killing him this time, but uh, he should be far enough back that she shouldn't have to if she does decide to keep doing our walls. Anyway, the other thing we've got going over here, and you should have seen in the time lapse, is, um, is this. This is currently a, a capture. I can fly. Definitely fly, there we go. Sort of a capture uh, water. It will automatically push whatever's in here down. Now, underneath it here, I'm going to build in um, a system for separating all of the mobs we're going to get, which are hopefully just going to be somewhat of a limit. Right, so um, let's do the filtering system now. Uh, this is a little bit based on some work by I saw by Pixel Riffs and some ideas I got from when I was making a uh, creeper farm back on Cosmocraft. So um, first thing we need to do is we need basically a catchment area underneath the plus. So this will be the catchment area. Oh, I guess that's the annoying thing about this, isn't it? Maybe we can start from here. Right, so they would fall down here, and then we basically need to, to work on the fact that zombies and skeletons will, um, what do you call it, sink. So we need, uh, yeah, like, space four here. Right, an explanation of how this works then. Uh, we're going to have some mob farm up above this. Uh, things will drop in and go sploosh in here. And the, I'll speed this up a bit. They'll get pushed down here and they'll drop into here. So the zombies and skeletons sink and creepers and witches float. So um, if we practice being floating, we'll float all the way over here and survive and then fall down there, which nothing at the moment. Meanwhile, uh, zombies and um, skeletons will slowly sink here, as we do, and drop into here. Now this side, we're going to put a villager here and dogs in these sections. So uh, zombies will see the villager rush over here and this is going to be replaced with the same style of stuff we have here with the trapdoors so they'll fall down there. The skeletons meanwhile will see the dogs run the other way and they'll fall through this set of trapdoors. The sorting zombies, skeletons and creepers and witches and then we have a new a thing over here, we'll have a thing over here to sort out the creepers and witches, which I will do next. But that's all we have time for this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed it, and I do hope you did, please leave a like on the video, and if you really have a comment, pop one of those down below, because they're always appreciated. In the meantime, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out the other live crafters, links are down below. You can especially check out JT and Bex, who've just returned after a small enforced absence, and after JT's charity stream last week, where he raised £620 for uh, his local school, where one of his, uh, his kids has been going to and been helped a great deal. So if you'd go pop over and give them a watch, that'll be very nice. And in the meantime, I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye for now.